Yeah, it was slow for us yesterday. We went to a different spot. Couldn't even find a tree to observe from. We tried to just pick a tree to do an observation set up there. And it was like just a wall of foliage. It was like you had to go 15 yards into the woods just to find a tree and then you couldn't see the field. I'm not going back there. Now I'm just finally starting to get in them. There's, there's something good back there. I mean, there's some really big rubs, um, big tracks all over the place. So just probably got to push a little further. <laughs> two hour drive and two, two mile walk? Yeah, it's... I think that's rough. Any other hunter sign back there? No, uh -uh. nobody's back that far. If somebody's going back about three quarters of that way on dry land, mm -hmm. um, you can see uh, like fat tire bike. Yep. Bike went back there a couple mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. but nobody's where we're at. Joe's up. I'm up. Your turn for big kill. Yeah. And I planned that perfectly because this spot is what, three miles? I would say three miles, yeah. Yeah, I lost the flip on that. <laughs> <laughs> he gets back there and he's exhausted. <laughs> but I get back there. Yeah. No, so what is, I don't know, probably almost a mile out to where we're going to go. Then you guys are going to go a little further and I'm going to split off and probably go another mile. And we probably walked a mile. Yeah, already. Already. So. I'm going to go to the island with the giant rubs and go to the other end of it. Mm -hmm. yep. So we're going to see what's going on over there. It looks like there's some bedding off that end. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hard part about this is uh, when we get back there, we're stuck back there with what we see. Yeah. You, you know, because there ain't no turning around. Yeah, you don't go back there and decide it's no good. You realize how hard this stuff is when you haven't pre-scouted. Mm -hmm. You know, just going in blind, yep. guessing on a map. Yep. It's, yeah. it's tougher than it seems. Where I dove into last night, the sign wasn't wasn't there but once once I was there I was committed so well commit tonight and shoot one mm-hmm because I want to see Teddy carry that thing out on its shoulders <laughs> three miles you can do it Teddy <laughs> we, we pulled up uh, a guy pulled up to the parking lot yesterday and he looked and he goes Teddy we're miles and miles and miles away yeah. from anything he's already an icon Teddy's becoming world famous yeah yeah, he went from uh, sweaty Teddy to lucky Teddy last night. I told him, <laughs> if, if we get on some deer, you'll become lucky Teddy. And tonight, if we get on more deer and they're bigger, I'm going to buy him a pack of gum. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't, man. <laughs> I'll splurge, man. Oh, it's good to catch my breath. A little hot today. Yeah, much warmer. Hotter than I expected. Yeah. So basically the, the plan today moving forward, you notice so far I haven't really shown any footage of morning hunts. That's because I really haven't been hunting mornings. One, because it gives me some time to edit and export videos. Uh, but also on some of these locations that I'm trying to hit, a lot of them are very you know pinpoint locations that I'm basically getting into and then trying to confirm once I'm there what the sign looks like. So from a morning perspective, it's be really tough to get in there without kind of screwing it up not knowing what it looks like exactly. If I was going after any deer, yeah, sure. But if I'm going after what I think might be, you know, a mature buck pinpoint type of spot, I would just, I feel more comfortable doing it in an evening sit. And so right now today, we're really close to the area that Aaron and I were set up two days ago. Uh, and this spot sets up pretty well for this wind. It's again, one of those spots where we're not really walking that far in terms of horizontal distance, but vertically we're doing a lot in a short amount of distance and this thing's got water separating public access. It's got steep hills, looks like cliffs vertically, and we think the deer might be bedding up on the top of those cliffs, on top of like, you know, kind of like an oak flat. And that bedding all just kind of drains up into a field to look like it had some CRP, maybe some alfalfa, corn, we don't exactly know. But the plan is to basically cross the creek, get up that steep drainage, and then try and see what we can see on that bench for sign. And if we don't see what we want there, then we'll just have to back around and kind of make a big loop to get up to where that CRP is. And then once we're up there, we can kind of evaluate what that sign looks like and see where we can set up as that drainage kind of empties up into there.
I thought about using that stick as I was about halfway through that current. I was like, that'd be a better idea than what I tried to do. Refresh and ready to go. 300 yards to the base of the valley and then like 300 feet almost straight up. Like that, I mean, you can see it where we're headed. I think that's the one I'm going to. Which one? Straight out. Looks like a good one. I would expect bedding to be off that uh, that tip, so it narrows down. Yep. And you have the uh, dogwood right on the tip. Yep. And you look a little further out, you see dogwood. Mm-hmm. I bet you that's where the bedding is. And they're coming up that narrow end. Okay. And this wind would be perfect for that. Yep. I'll see when I get closer what it looks like here. Well. Good luck. You gonna hit it right now? Yeah. Good luck, man. Yeah, you too. Don't let Teddy convince you to shoot something you shouldn't. <laughs> I'd convince him. <laughs> the track's dead. sign looks good, but I think we're going to push deeper. I think I want to see what's going on further back. This trail is really churned up with tracks, fresh tracks, and there's three fresh scrapes right here and still got the claw marks, and that's still got a wet spot in the middle right here. This is the very end of the island, <clears throat> and all the signs been coming from down here. So, I think we're getting in the neck of the woods where we want to set up. It's just a matter of how far we go. Because uh, <clears throat> if you watch that buck uh, that came in yesterday, as soon as he hit that hot acorn tree, he stopped. And he stayed there till dark. So I don't want that happening again today. So we want to get as close as possible so that we have shooting. So my thought process is here. Is this little island here that's like about an eighth of an acre in front of us or the tip of it? I think you're coming on there from several ways. I think just buck bedding in a couple directions. And the trails meet right here, and where they meet, there's a bunch of scrapes. And in the past, I've had a lot of action on scrapes in September that are active where staging areas meet from multiple bedding areas. So my, that's my thought process. Instead of up here, I'm hoping the bucks come out and they go to here first to mark the scrapes before they feed and move off. And hopefully they don't stop on one of the oak trees and eat too much first. It's good in theory, we'll see how it works. got out to this island. Um, Dan and Ted are actually way out, They're out there on that island right there. Um, so what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to skirt the edge of this island then right to the end. It looks like there's some bedding off the point, some dogwood and stuff right off the end. Um, so I'm going to sneak down there. I'm probably not going to do a pre-hunt interview just because I feel like I'm getting in there so tight, but we've got a bunch of wind right now, so that should help. So, so I made it to the tree. Um, I think I can get away with a lot of noise doing this interview. I think I'm set up pretty good. I've actually got a trail right below me here where they're coming off another oak island behind me. Hopefully that island doesn't hold them up until dark. But uh, I've got two scrapes in here, or three scrapes in here. Um, the sign looks awesome. There's fresh poop. Um, you can see where they're scratching and grabbing the acorns. I've got bedding all around this point. There's bedding over there. There's bedding back behind me. And the wind is going that way, so I'm set up perfectly here. We'll see what happens. Never the same track, so that place is just going to shoot all this stuff. 
back here is like landlocked public. This is all private up here, but the access is from the other side of that real steep ridge. Zach and I have been thinking about that a lot, but we got on all this sign. We haven't had a chance to go back there. Probably won't now. Black truck is going to but he could be going back there. That's which way the truck's facing. I'd imagine that's which way he's going, hopefully. Either way, we'll be going right to the field edge, so I don't think we'll mess him up. I mean, if we see him on the way in, we'll just back out. But Well, Greg and I just got to the spot here. Greg's been cooped up for a couple days, so he's going to get out and be my cameraman today. Hayden and Alex are already here, and they'll be hunting about 300 yards away from us where Alex saw those bucks last night. And Greg and I are going to be going a little bit deeper where Zach and I found that sign this morning. But this kind of throws a loop in things. Maybe I guess we're just going to walk back in there, and if the guy's back in there, we'll just back out. But there's a lot of public land for him to work with that way, so I'm, I'm not too worried about it yet. So we're going to get packed up, and we got some stands to hang tonight for the first time on this trip. We're going to have to do it pretty quiet, because based off what we've been seeing, these deer are not bedded very far away from the fields. So I think if we take our time, we shouldn't have any problems. That scrape is right under those trees right there, 10 yards away. And we haven't walked through any of that edge now. So we don't have any ground scent up there. The decision is, these trees are definitely hangable. That's the right tree there, but I don't know if I've got a shot other than if he comes down the edge of the field. Well, Greg and I are set up, and we decided to go against the stance tonight. This tree just works out, so I can kind of stand on these limbs, and I can actually work around the tree. That way, if I need to shoot over here, I can. Onto the field, I can. And even over to my right. Greg's right above me. And we're anticipating the deer to be bedded down more this way. Our wind is kicking that way a bit. And the point of the ridge goes this way, and there's oaks down there. And a bunch of trails you can see on Onyx leading up to this field. That fresh scrape is right here on the edge of the field. Alex and Logan are just on the other side of this ridge over here, overlooking a CRP field that butts up against where he saw those bucks come out last night and they actually heard sparring this morning when they were hunting. So they know that those bucks are bedded out in that CRP, and they're sitting on a huge trail that's coming right into the field there, and they're right where one of the bucks entered the field last night. The bigger one that Alex saw kind of came from the direction that we're at right now. So hopefully there's a whole bunch of them in here, and maybe we can double up tonight. But I can definitely see those guys seeing some bucks tonight. They know they're gonna be within 100 and 150 yards of them, so. Now, we just got to the top of this big 300 foot bluff, and I can see a faint trail already just around the top of the bluff. We're about 200 yards from the tip of the point that was overlooking the parking lot that we were at. Um, so we're just going to kind of slowly sneak in the woods and just see what we see for sign that we might be able to set up on.
box. Just got a text from Joe. Just smashed a giant. <laughs> Wait till everybody sees where this thing is. Yeah. Middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. He's three miles out there. <laughs> That's, <awesome>. <laughs> That's great. We got a couple more minutes, gotta keep it down. Yeah. Cool. That's sweet. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, I'm like three miles back here right now. We're bouncing in these islands and this one's like the furthest back and I decided, hey, I'll make the trek. And I got set up in here, got set up perfectly. He comes right in, I come the full draw and I was full draw on him, I don't know, watch the video back. It'll be probably like over a minute. But the shot looked perfect. I'm gonna watch the video back. If the shot looks great, I wanna get down, at least get lower because I'm pretty sure I saw him fall over there. It, it looked fantastic. I mean, it was a cake shot. I, I would say double long heart, so. All right, so I just got out of the tree here. You can see it behind me. And uh, my arrow is right over there. But I got something better to show you. Look at that rack just sticking up. Let's go take a look at this thing. Look at the size of that thing. Mass. <laughs> so this is probably the buck that's been leaving the sign. But basically there's a bunch of islands behind us. We've been hopping around trying to figure out where all this big sign is coming from. And uh, this is probably the furthest back island here. And uh, I crept in here, got set up on him. This is actually the trail that I thought he would come in on. That's the island he came off of. I believe he came off the back of it because the island itself, I think he would have seen me set up. So, you know what? Let's go take a look for the sake of learning. Well, he could have been bedded on the back side of all this here. It's hard to say, but it looks like he could be bedding under those trees. I gotta keep moving here. I don't have a lot of time to screw around, I guess, but could be bedding out in those cats, under those dogwood and that dead tree. So I'm gonna go take the stand down, throw some clothes over that deer, get out. It'll probably take us two hours to bring all the equipment back to the truck. And then uh, we gotta figure out how we're gonna get this thing out of here. So I don't know if we're gonna have to go buy packs or how we're gonna go about this, but we'll figure it out. Nothing tonight. Our wind was swirly, like I mentioned before. I don't know if that had something to do with it. I imagine that was a night where deer moved quite a bit. Actually, I know it was. Jo Joe shot a giant tonight. Orb texted us, so and he's about three miles back. So I don't know if they're going to need help with that or what. I think they're hunting pretty far away from here. I don't know how they're going to get that thing out of there. I'll be interested to see what Alex and Hayden saw on the other side, but we're going to start climbing down and get out of here. Go back to the drawing board for tomorrow, I guess. That's about all the camera light we got in here. It's still fairly light up on the field. I want to, before we leave, just walk up to that field and just glass the rim and see if we see any deer, and if so, where they probably came out from and where they're probably bedding them.
my. What is that thing? When I just popped around the corner of all this brush, I could see his rag just sitting there, right on the edge of the field. And I could see his, his chest patch, like he was facing me. And I ranged him at 47 yards, but I was fairly certain he was standing on that, that uh, private field, so I wouldn't be able to shoot him. I figured, man, they're, they're, they're just bedding out in the CRP, I think. Yeah, that makes it super tough to hunt these these deer because a lot of them I think they're just they're bedded right on this. He had to have been bedding between us and the field because where he's at, he would have if he was bedding in the woods, he would have came right past us. So I'm sure he was bedded in this thick stuff right on the edge of this field. Oh, it's nice and chilly. <laughs> Look at that arrow, Theodore. <laughs> Theodore, Teddy. Did you see that thing? Yeah, I, I got a glimpse of it. I didn't see yeah, it real good. I don't have is, a good picture. Is it a big one? He's a big one, yeah. At, at least, I would say at least 140. Big body on him. Uh, mature animal for sure. Nice, nice. But, Maybe nice. he's uh, the one killing all these trees. I think he is. You saved the forest. I did save the forest. Dude, dude. <laughs> You saved the forest. You're like a hero. Is that right? Minions are gonna make songs about you. I thought that was Ted. No, they, they <laughs> given up on Ted. You oh, killed the they 140. Give, uh, they yeah. given up on Ted. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew this island hopping crap was gonna work. Oh, right. It, it was it was getting discouraging to a degree. Y yeah, but, but you know what the biggest discouragement is? Is you almost need to just go out and scout a whole bunch of them, mm -hmm. and then hit the good one. Yep. But it's they're so remote. By the time you scout one, you almost gotta stay there. Yeah. But. Yep. Uh, I mean, for you, you've done it for how many years, you know, so you know. Right. You, you, you know, you I, I, I figured we'd get, we'd get on this stuff. It just takes time. Yeah. I mean, but, but look at it. When, when did we get over here? Yeah. And then when, when did we get back here and get in here deep enough and figure things out and then say, okay, we got next next step. Yep. And then you drill the thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> now, I might have to swim a little further out there. Let's I don't do know it. how much further I can get than three miles, though. That's insane. <laughs> Is Aaron come out tonight? Yeah, so some three or four guys are coming out with packs. Wow. So that'll be fantastic. Those guys know what they're into? You told them how long the drive is? I told them three miles and we're going through a bunch of angle busters. And <laughs> you told them how far it is to drive out here? I dropped them a pin. So they're going to plug the pin and it'll say three hours. <laughs> well, guys, it's 1130 p.m. We're at BP. Got to put a little rocket fuel in the old Desert Eagle here because uh, Zinger and I are going up to help Joe get this buck out of this uh, swamp. Made it. So it's uh, 1.33 a.m. right now. Um, Zach and Aaron got here a little bit ago. We probably hiked, I don't know, three quarters of a mile at this point. Um, we're about to dip down into the swamp. I would say we got about a two mile hike, a little over two mile hike through the swamp. And we're gonna go pack this thing out. Got the frame packs that worked the other day pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I think that'll be good because <laughs> if you had to drag a deer out of this, it would be miserable. You got the little, what do they call them? Hum hummocks? Hummocks. hummocks. Yeah, the hummocks, you twist your ankles, bust your ankles off in there. So um, I think the packs will be appropriate. So we're headed in. Let's do it. Well, it's almost two. We've made it to the first island, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And this is the one where you yep. guys saw that two-year-old buck mm -hmm. and those does. Mm-hmm. So prior to going out there, um, we hunted this island an island up there, another island up there, and when I got out there that had the hottest sign of any of the islands. Um, these islands the acorns are starting to dry up on. Uh, the tracks are a little older on these islands, wouldn't you say? Some, yeah. some of the rubs were, but when I got on there it was hot. I mean there was poop that was fresh from probably the night before. Um, the dirt was turned up, scratched up. I mean it looks it looks fantastic out there. So um, I knew I was into something, but didn't know what. Yeah, we got to stay left here, right? It's pretty far. <laughs> Isn't it insane? As a crow flies, it probably ain't that bad, but right. you gotta go through all that nasty crap to get back here. Right. Oh man. Get the warm. <laughs> Look at that thing, Joe. <laughs> 
Oh, that's got more mass wow. than it looked like in the picture. Yeah, he's a dandy. Yeah. He's a nice. stud. Sweet rack. That's a neat yeah, rack, isn't it? Yeah, kind of like. That's real awesome. That's a pretty, pretty buck, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, that's definitely a mature buck. Yeah. Yeah, in the pictures, it didn't show that character that just like twists to the rack and yeah. the mass. So where do you think this guy was bedded in relation? So you're over <laughs> here. Yep. And you had this wind. Nope, the wind was actually coming this way. There, there's a bowl with hardwoods that goes out around each side of the bowl, or oaks that go around each side of the bowl. And it's surrounded by canary grass around the whole thing. And then out in the canary grass are different tiny little oak islands. And then on the map, you could see there's some bedding um, behind those little oak islands. There's little sticks and dogwood and red brush. And I think he was on the back of the island, or behind the island in that red brush and that dogwood. And he worked onto the island. How? far do you think he moved then from his bed to you? If I had to take a wild guess, I would say 100 yards. You shot him pretty early, I yeah, thought. I yep. And when I came in, because the wind was going that way, and there's a hill here, I hugged that side and stayed low all the way around, just in case there was something bedded down here. I mean, without knowing where the bedding was, right? And hugging the downwind side is a good yep. idea, because mm -hmm. if deer travel the island, you know, then they won't smell where you walked, and anything downwind, it's going to smell you anyways. Right. Well, you guys are the first killers in the challenge, man. <laughs> Can't say I'm too surprised. Uh, uh, I guess the second, um, Hayden killed one, mm -hmm. still hunting the other day, yeah. up in the hills. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, that was uh, surprising. Yep. Late morning, right? Yeah, yeah 11 o'clock. So yeah, cool. 11 o'clock, still hunting through the bedding. When we, when we went at the starting, I mean, uh, I really thought that we'd go into um, the area right by your campground. Right. And uh, jump in those swamps, find the isolated oaks, and just kill bucks galore and it didn't really work that way <laughs> <laughs> we got in there and there was no oaks in any of those swamps they're all up in the hills and it seemed like all the sign was two three weeks old and that the bucks had abandoned and gone up into the, into the oaks and we felt like it would be hard to kill them in the oak in uh the hills so we kind of um strategized to find some sort of marsh or cattail marsh that had that had uh, oaks or a swamp that had oaks oak islands and uh, we we're having a hard time finding them, and uh, we called a couple friends of ours that live out here. Yeah. We got some advice on uh, on this marsh, but it, um, when we looked, what is it, a three-hour three drive? Three-hour drive camp? Mm -hmm. camp. Yeah, yeah. Nice. this is our third day, three hours each way, six hours a day. Yeah, but what's what's real interesting, and we find this consistently, almost regardless of the terrain or the area that we're hunting, is the first day or two you're just you know, kind of beating your head against the door, mm -hmm. but you're working closer and closer. And like you guys said a couple of days ago, you were finding sign here. Mm -hmm. You knew there was a good one in here somewhere. Yep. Yep. And it just took that progression and kind of explain what that consists of. Like, cause you started way back there, right. you know, half mile back mm -hmm. there on the first evening when you found the trail camera. Mm -hmm. The hardest part is knowing what, what sign to go past and what sign to sit on. Right, exactly. I mean, we felt like the sign that we were hitting might be a couple of days old and stuff, but it was big sign yep. and it was hard to walk past. So yeah. I think a couple of the sits we thought, well, we're probably not going to see something, but I really can't walk past this and burn it. No. And we just kept working our way back. It's really like yeah. island hopping, you know, just yeah. the, ice, the isolated oaks out here. And you look at this huge mass area, the oaks are really limited, mm -hmm. you know, and, and if you can get out to those limited oaks, that's where the bucks are. And, uh, you know, I think it's probably easier to kill a buck like this the first two weeks of the season here than it probably is the whole rest of the season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as you said, they're on their summer pattern, essentially, when they're this remote, right? Yeah. They don't have any pressure, and that's how he was acting, I mean, being out that early. They're wide open, though. That's what I was yep. so surprised about. Yeah, that was shocking to me, here, too. Yeah. This is yeah. probably the most grassy island, wouldn't you say, Dan? Yeah. In mm -hmm. regards to, and those sub islands are even more grassy than this but you know when you, you look at back home me and him both hunt swamps and stuff and and you go back home and islands like this are not this open no so it was it was kind of shocking to me and you don't know what you're going to get into but the sign don't lie mm -hmm. you know we got out here and the rubs are here and stuff and you know bucks we you know, they're around here. yep mm -hmm. big bucks yeah. Yeah. at least there were yeah, <laughs> yeah. At least there were yeah. i'm hoping there might be one more <laughs> One common theme amongst every group so far is number one, everybody's mobile. Mm -hmm. Like we're not sitting in yep. the same spots over and over. It's constantly on the move, constantly adapting yep. yeah. to the situation. Like these guys, they've been, this is the third evening here, right? Mm -hmm. yep. They've been pushing deeper and deeper every sit until boom, here he is. 
and uh, we've been doing the same thing. So is Garrett. I think a lot of guys too, uh, they concentrate on one property mm -hmm. and try to find the best stuff in the property. I mean, when we first started, me and Joe, um, we hit about four or five properties before we were happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, you just you got to be able to move, mm -hmm. yeah, and just keep trying different areas until you get into them. Yeah, yeah. and then when you hit the sign then narrow your focus yeah mm -hmm. and your confidence goes up it makes it easier to do though mm -hmm. at that point because then you're like okay here it is there's a big one in here this is super fresh he's got to be in here somewhere yeah I, another good thing to point out too is how quickly we learned i mean i learned you knew this already how quickly you burn these oak islands up mm -hmm. you get one sit on them those deer come in there they smell you were there and the next night it's no good you were sitting on probably the biggest oak island out here mm -hmm. tonight right Last night there were a bunch of deer in there, tonight, nothing. Yeah. Well, now yeah. we've got a bit of a chore. What time is it? It's gotta be three. Oh, it's, yeah, it's getting there. 2.40. 2.40, <laughs> and uh, this thing is three miles back here. There's no way you're getting a deer cart back here. No. The Not sled wouldn't have worked with all those little hummocks or whatever you call those yeah. things. We could probably throw it on Ted's shoulders. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna get him uh, quartered up though and put him on these frame packs. And, yeah. yeah. Or maybe we'll have some sunlight to get her out of here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we'll turn off the flashlights. <laughs> we'll run into people coming in on the main trail. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Quarter to six, 546. We just made it to the truck. Yeah, I guess it's time to go back out. Let's go. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so we plugged in Onyx, and the final result from where we shot the buck to the truck, 2.74 miles. 6 a.m., and now we got a three-hour drive back to camp. Well, that's the uh, end of day four. Another buck on the ground. We got to leave, though if we hang around much longer we're just gonna be falling asleep so we're gonna get on the road hopefully we're able to make it back without too many pit stops and sleeping on the way home thank you guys for watching we thanks for watching it. that's a long day <laughs>